What is going on, beautiful people? It is Bet Slam with Sam, and this is Slam of the Week. If you are new here, Slam of the Week is where I pick one fighter on the card that is most certain to win, almost with 100% certainty, in this week's event for UFC 307, Pereira versus Khalil Roundtree. The Slam of the fucking Week is going to be Joaquin Buckley. And I'm going to run you through why. First, I do want to start off talking about Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, guys. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson has been inside the promotion for 12 years. He came back to the UFC all the way back in 2012. You know, he has been beloved by the fans. At one point, he was a title contender, but he did eventually lose to Tyron Woodley, not once, but two times, you know. Yes, it was a draw decision, but it's not a win. You know, so he said two cracks at the title, lost both times, and then he was building his way back up when he did run into Gilbert Burns, where he got wrestle-fucked to a decision loss, and then Bilal Muhammad. Both of those fights took place in 2021. Look, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, amazing karate-style striker, like in and out movement for days. It was showcased in 2022 when he took on Kevin Holland in an all-out war on the feet where Kevin Holland had a gentleman's agreement to not take down Wonderboy Thompson, which he did break eventually when Wonderboy was piecing him up. He then fought Shavkat Rachmanov. And guys, when he fought Shavkat Rachmanov, it was a nine-minute fight, nine-and-a-half-minute fight, and he lost all nine minutes of that. There was about six seconds of success that you could find Stephen Wonderboy Thompson actually winning that fight. Other than that, it was all Shavka. And yes, you could say he defended four takedowns, but even in his defense, he got pushed up against the cage and held there for minutes at a time. The takedowns that Shavka attempted in that fight are not the takedowns that Joaquin Buckley is going to attempt. You know, Shavka was pushing him up against the fence and trying to go for takedowns like that. That's not what you're going to see from Joaquin Buckley. Let's talk about Numancer. Look, Joaquin Buckley came into the UFC back in 2020. He had a UFC debut against Kevin Holland. And if you guys don't know, 2020 is the year where Kevin Holland won Fighter of the Year. I believe he won five straight fights in 2020, one of those being against Joaquin Buckley. At the time, nobody knew who the fuck Buckley was, so this win didn't mean a whole lot. But it was Joaquin Buckley's UFC debut. And I do want to point that out because how many great fighters have we seen lose the UFC debut and then go on to do absolutely wonderful things? Since then, you know, he beat Impa Kasanganai, who has now won the PFL not once but two times, I believe, two times PFL championship winner. Defeated Jordan Wright, doesn't say much. Did lose by head kick in round one against Alessio Tagerica. Beautiful head kick uh, that was, you know, a, a bit of a, uh, a lackluster performance there. But then he went to win on three straight. And this is where things got spicy because Joaquin Buckley did lose two fights straight in 2022. He lost a unanimous decision against Nasadin Imavov, one of the greatest middleweights on earth to this day. And then he lost by finish to Chris Curtis. And that was a wake-up call for Buckley. He said, look, I'm not big enough to be in that middleweight division. And he was right, you know. He should have been a 170-pounder. So he made that weight cut. He committed to a diet and nutrition plan. He has toned in his body. He's put in his fitness regime. And then he has rattled off four straight victories with two finishes and two decisions. Look, he finished Andre Filo, finished Vicente Luque, won by unanimous decision against Morono and Rusaboyev. Joaquin Buckley is improving. He is 30 years old, and he strikes with the people that are looking to wrestle with him, and he will wrestle against the people that are looking to strike with him. He doesn't fight with his ego. You know, he will go to the path of least resistance, which in this matchup is going to be the takedown against Stephen Thompson. If he was unable to get the takedowns, which I truly believe he's going to easily get these takedowns, but let's say he's unable to get the takedowns against Stephen Thompson, I still think he's in there with a chance. He's going to be faster than Stephen Thompson. He's absolutely fresher. He's 30 years old. Stephen Thompson, yes, he takes amazing care of his body. Yes, he hasn't taken a ton of damage inside of his UFC career, but the dude is 41 years old and has been fighting in the UFC for 12 years. That is an enormous amount of time. It doesn't matter how much your career is based around damage mitigation. That is a lifetime of combat sports. Joaquin Buckley is in his prime. Father time is undefeated. Joaquin Buckley is going to come in here. He's the fresher athlete. I think minus 185 is a phenomenal price. 
I could see Joaquin Buckley being minus 300 in this matchup, and I probably would still play him. I think this stylistic matchup is going to be a nightmare for Wonderboy Thompson. The way that Wuckling Buckley shot those takedowns against Nurse Sultan Rosenboyev running straight through him like a freight train is going to be perfect for the likes of Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. If Stephen Thompson is not constantly laterally moving, he is going to hit the canvas early and often in this matchup. I'm taking Joaquin Buckley. I think he wins this fight by decision, but on the money line, there's still plenty of juice for you to squeeze there. That is the slam of the week, guys. Tail now or regret it later. I will see you all at the cash counter.